So today we're going to prove that the Lagrangian is invariant under a gauge transformation. So let's consider n generalized coordinates that will labor as a vector q, this one, and its Lagrangian is given by L, which is a function of the q's, the q dots, and t. Next, we define a gauge transformation, which we will call L prime, which is just the original Lagrangian plus the total derivative with respect to time of some function of the q's and the t's, so not not the q dots, that's important, just q and t. <clears throat> so for each coordinate, the Euler-Lagrange equation, so for L, is just dL by dQi equals d by dt of dL by dQi dot. And so what we want to show is that the Euler-Lagrange equations for L prime for L prime equal those for L. <coughs> so let's rewrite our uh, transform Lagrangian. So L prime equals L plus df by dt. And so let's rewrite this in a in a neat in a let's expand this this total derivative. So we know that df is just df by dqi plus df sorry df by dqi dqi plus df by dt, partial f by partial t, times dt. Therefore, df by dt is just df by dqi, qi dot, plus df by dt times 1, right? Because dt by dt is 1. So therefore, our L prime is just L plus df by dqi qi dot plus df by dt. So if we recall the uh, equation, so we first want to compute dl prime by dqi. And so that's just equal to dl by dqi plus d by dqi of df by dqi times qi dot plus d by dqi of df by dt. We see that this qi comes out and that just that's just a second partial derivative. So we just have that dl prime by dqi is just dl by dqi plus qi dot times d squared f by dqi squared plus d squared f by dqi dt. So this is a mixed partial derivative. And we see that this is the same thing if we interchange these two, right? All right, next, we want to find dl prime by dqi dot. So if we go back to our de definition of l prime, it's just this. So we'd have dl by dqi dot plus d by dqi dot df by dqi times qi dot plus d by dqi dot of df by dt. So we need to remember that f is not a function of q dot, right? So this term will become zero. And to evaluate this derivative, we just 
use the fact that this, sorry, there should be a dot there, that this appears there, so this is just a constant. So then dl prime by dqi dot is just dl by dqi dot plus df by dqi. And now what we want to do is compute d by dt of dl prime by dqi dot and that is just d by dt of dl by dqi dot plus d by t so the total derivative of partial f by partial qi so a trick that we could use to uh, compute this term would be to write that df by dqi is just g of q and t and therefore we'd have by dt of g and that would just be dg by dqi qi dot plus dg by dt, partial g by partial t. <clears throat> I just use the same same method than the one I used above, so this one. I'm just using the same method. And now we can just rewrite g as partial f by partial qi. So we just get that d by dt of g is simply d squared f by dqi squared, right? So I'm just placing g by df by dqi times qi dot plus d squared f by dt dqi, right? So we have the d l prime by, sorry, so d by dt of dl prime by dqi dot is just d by dt dl by dqi dot plus qi dot d squared f by dqi squared plus d squared f by dt dqi. So I've just rewritten what we found previously for dl prime by dqi and therefore the Euler-Lagrange equation is just dl prime by dqi equals d by dt partial l prime by partial qi dot and we see that when we equate both of these sides these terms just vanish right because we're they're just some added they're just added to both sides so we can just subtract them and we therefore see that this is the same as dl by dqi equals d by dt dl by dqi dot so therefore the transformation that we introduced so the gauge transformation this one has had no effect on the equations of motion.